Hey guys, welcome back to the Judy Kamangu Show. If you've been here before and if you haven't, welcome. Make sure you know you subscribe because it's a vibe. <laughs> I need a pair of new sneaks so I can kick it like a ball sneak. No days off, nigga. So such and only miss it when it's low, nigga. Right, sad. Now you know the coast, nigga. Back to back, this is what I do all day. But it beats got it sounding like a water. Flex. So today I want to talk about something that by the title you may be like, okay, what are you saying? But it'll make sense when I get through it, right? This is just an opinion from most people I've spoken to who are, you know, black women or female presenting people. These are the types of conversations we've had and the types of feelings we have when it comes to these things. So that's why I'm talking about us. But this technically can be applied to almost all black people or people of color, depending on the space that you're in. This is about how black women, we can't be mediocre when it comes to being creative. Actually, most things, you can't be mediocre when it comes to your job, right? And you're not allowed to fail, really. Because the minute that you fail, the minute you don't do well, the minute your thing is not amazing, people lose faith in you because you're supposed to be like, you know, you fought so hard to be in this position that you're in that you can't really do bad. Now, there's really nothing wrong with doing bad or being mediocre sometimes because it's physically impossible to be great at everything. It's really impossible to like, you know, constantly make amazing content. And I've had this conversation where I say, did artists o do artists always greatness? Um, which was about the fact that, you know, people expect artists, every everything we put out must be like, wow, or else they're like, you've lost it. And it's like, Okay, bitch, I just made this from my brain. <laughs> like, there was, this thing didn't exist and I made it happen. I made it a new thing. We're fucking inventors, okay? You know, me and my friend are having a conversation last night. Um, cause she's staying over. We were talking about, like, just our experiences in the industry and stuff like that. She was talking about the fact that, like, you know, it seems like, and I'm gonna say bluntly, it seems like white people don't have to do that much sometimes to get into spaces. Which we know, it's a privilege. Um, yeah. <laughs> don't get touched. It's fine, you have a privilege. Now this is not to say that there's no such thing as creative white people or white people who do amazing work. Of course they are, duh. But it's also to mention the fact that there are also lots of white people in spaces where they don't do good work, like ever. Their work is fine, <laughs> but they get praised and they get jobs and they, and they are never hungry. They're never hungry and they don't have to do much, really. They just have to exist. They take one nice photo in 2017 and that's the entry into the industry for them and then that they don't ever grow from that. Um, and we're also talking about how like, you know, that affected us in film school and stuff like that. A lot of the people who were in our film school, not just in our year, but within, did not always do the best work, but they got praised. It made me think about the fact that like, you know, they are allowed to have that stage where they are kind of basic which is fine, again, like, especially when you're starting out in the industry, it's okay that you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> you know, you don't know how to do everything well, that's obviously perfect, like, go, you know, we're starting out in the industry, we don't know how to do everything that we set out to do, of course not, it's like, impossible, but it sucks that, like, you know, those people were able to be mediocre and it was fine, but then if you were mediocre, it's like, oh my god, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and I'm saying this from literal, like, personal experience within film school. Here's what I mean. So I remember, and I'm sorry to come at you, but we move. You won't remember me. So I was doing a particular class on script writing, right? And I wrote um, a story that I finally actually finished now. Congratulations to me. In this film class, what I was supposed to do is kind of start a feature film, right? Like, that's the whole thing about it. We're supposed to start it, write every, all the planning towards it, um, you know, the beats, log lines, premise, blah, 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 all the things. If you're a filmmaker, you know this shit, right? You know, we all came up with ideas. We all pitched our ideas. We all spoke about our ideas throughout, you know? And I remember, you know, the lecturer, and this is just him specifically being problematic. I remember the lecturer, like, you know, listening to everyone and giving particular types of critique towards particular types of people, right? And a lot of the particular people, this is actually to do with mostly black women and everyone else so you know a lot of the critique he gave to other people or like you know work on this kind of things were fine like their stories were meh you know like their stories are like fine and it's not to be a dick i was like oh okay and i remember like this lecturer had this thing where he was like jules i believe you can do even more than that and i was like 
What do you mean? It's like, think about it. If you're writing for, you know, Mzanzi, for example, your story wouldn't work. I'm like, valid. That's why I'm not writing it for Mzanzi. I'm writing this story in my film school where I get to dream and pretend that everyone's gonna just love my fucking work, right? Because the type of story I was writing is very like Manchester by the Sea, if you've ever watched that. Where it's not like, drama, 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 which is what Mzanzi wants, which is not a bad thing. Like, of course, you want things to constantly happen because it's a shorter type of format, right? So, I was writing something very relaxed, something that's not too dramatic. So, you know, there's danger, but it's not like, and then cars exploded and they chased her and she nearly died and then, oh my God, flying this and that and the other, you know, or she cheated on someone with this and did that, you know, it wasn't any of that shit. So I'm like, all right, fine. So I worked on it and you know what? I made it interesting. I, I went and he's like, no, but you can still do more. And I was like, I don't know if I want to. And he's like, no, I believe in you. Do more. So I handed in a whole ass beat sheet and he literally made me do it again because he said it's not enough drama. But with the other mediocre stories, he left them. I know this because we discussed this. Everyone else was so happy and there were two of us who had to redo it and guess what, what skin tone we were. Guess what gender we are. So fine, I redid it. I was like, you know what, I kind of rushed. Valid, I have 800 assignments to do. I'm tired of the school. I want to go <laughs> so I redo it and he's still like okay and it's like he was disappointed and he did I said to me I believe you can do better than this I don't even know this man he has not taught me at all this is the first time we're interacting with each other and he keeps saying I must do more now valid three years after practicing and working and consuming more content and stuff as an adult of course I can do better than what I did at film school but again, I'm at film school. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm learning. <laughs> the story was actually still so solid that I was able to literally just carry on. And ch I barely changed half of the first act, to be very honest with you, because it was actually really good. It was just mostly like spelling errors and, sh and format errors, which is only because I didn't have the software we needed. But aside from that, the story is actually really good. And even when I gave it to my friend again, she's like, it still gives me chills. This is so good. But this man wanted me to be fucking Martin Scorsese. Okay, does he write his own things? He wanted me to be Quentin Tarantino in film school. <laughs> I was like, I dug. Hell no. I get Quentin didn't go to film school in here. But Quentin also had time to practice and practice and practice and focus on one thing. The moral of what I'm trying to say is that it's like we're not allowed to just be okay. You know, and, and the thing is with just being okay sometimes, it's, oh, it's really fine. It's not to say we can't be great. But sometimes... Sometimes I'm just going to write an okay story and I'm proud that I wrote a story and made a story. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm proud that I directed a, a film. It's practice sometimes. It really is. Even if I've been in the industry for 10 years, for example, it's still sometimes practice. You're doing something new. It turned out okay, but it's fine. We still had a good time and we still, you know, win with it. Because I remember that class giving me the most freaking stress of my life. I was so tired. I was exhausted. I nearly hated my story. Because, you, you know, this person wanted me to give things I don't have. I am not at that point. He wanted me to make the story I made now. Three years after film school. It, it doesn't make sense that I was, suppo I was expected to be this great freaking writer at that very moment. And the worst part is he compared me to my own friend <laughs> in how I should be better. And I was like, oh, well then, fuck you. How do you expect me to be so fantastic? and then allow people to be so basic. In my opinion, he marked things like, uh, I think that they're never gonna go that far, you know? <laughs> so it's fine, you can get an 80. You though, can do better than, your, your story's already better than theirs, but you can do better than that. So then I'm gonna give you a 50, because you must know that you must do better. You know, back in the days when I just started trying to get into the photography game, started getting interested in representing women's bodies in a very different way from how men do it, right? I started looking at all the photographers that people are obsessed with and a lot of them are freaking amazing and this has nothing, this is not even against them, <laughs> they're amazing of course but a lot of them were like whatever, they took a half naked woman, put her in the street, added a lot of contrast in Lightroom and voila and because they own like the best Canon photography camera it of course looked beautiful but people were like yo you're the one the followings are crazy jobs are booked and i was just like okay at the time i lost a job to someone who and this is not even their work is again beautiful but they are a photographer 
and I can work with moving images. <laughs> but I didn't get the job because I guess I'm a woman and I had to be even more amazing than I really was at that very moment in my career. And it sucks because it's like I really, I think sometimes I can't get opportunities just because I'm not this brilliant black woman. <laughs> not because I, my work is really good, it really is, but I, of course I have time to grow, I have space to grow, I'm not at my peak, oh hell no. <laughs> barely even touched that thing, barely grazed the peak. I'm also very aware that I don't get jobs sometimes because of that, because I'm not this phenomenal woman yet, because I'm not like, I'm not this DOP with a whole team who shot a million different things at this very moment, because it, it now looks like I'm not working hard enough because I'm a black woman. Everyone's like, you're a black person, you're a woman, you're, you know, queer, you should be doing even more, 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 more. And it's like, I'm a human being, guys. I'm really working as hard as I can, but I'm also taking into account like my mental health, um, my goals, you know, sometimes I'm like, actually, I don't think I like this direction I'm going in. Let me try something different. So I have to start afresh. It seems like, you know, every time people give me advice on how I can get further in my career, it requires me to be at a level of creativity that I'm obviously not at yet and will get to, but I'm not necessarily supposed to be at. I'm, I know 26 sounds like, oh my God, you should have a house and a car and your fucking family sorted <laughs> because that's how we assume life is. And being out of school for three years and having a year of a pandemic and half my, what's this, half of my other year out of varsity was unemployed. Oh shit. Wow. I really didn't live life. I'm getting back into a point now, back, back into the groove of creating content and creating um, ideas and writing again. And I'm so proud of myself that I'm getting here. But I'm also realizing the people that I'm working with sometimes aren't doing that great. But they get so many opportunities just because they've got a dick between their legs or because they're white or because they're Indian, especially South Africa, because Indian people as much as you want to fight it, are more privileged, way more privileged than black and colored people in this country. And this is not to say that people don't deserve opportunities. Of course, fuck man, get that job. Like I want everyone to have opportunities no matter your skin tone and stuff like that. But I also want it to be a fair standing. I want it to be that, okay, if we must all be fantastic at like creating content, then let us all, we must all be held to the same standard in order to be considered great creators, for example, right? Because it's unfair otherwise. You know what I'm saying? If I'm in film school trying to write a script, you better come for the white person who has a mediocre story that they have no relation to the same way you came at me. The thing is, I'm not a mediocre woman. I'm not, I'm not a mediocre person. But I'd like the opportunity where I could be and where I'm allowed to fail and people are not gonna lose faith in me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm working on trying to get my very first film commissioned. And I also, I, of course I'm gonna work my fucking hardest. I love working hard and I love the story. But I also don't want it to be that if, God forbid, that film fails, people are gonna be like, I again. we don't want. But this white people get funding every day after film is like, eh. Look at Elaine, right? Amazing artist. But if her second album is not as good as her first, people might never listen to her again. You know how much pressure that is? That's why people take so much time to create things, especially when they're black women. Because we're so scared that if we don't do the best we can right now, it's over. Our whole careers are over. Every single job I go to, I have to make sure that I am doing my best. And it's so true. Like, as, as a woman, especially if you fail, people don't believe in you. It's like if uh, Hillary Clinton became president of America, they obviously would have hated her from day dot. But like, if she failed one thing and she did half the things Obama did, they would have hated, hated her, never ever trusted any other woman to be president ever again. People would be like, ah, you see, woman can't. Sometimes I get scared because I'm like, are people going to look at that one film and be like, oof, <sighs> we don't want to work through. It really sucks that we're so afraid to fail. And it's because it's been set up that way that we're not allowed to fail. It's been set up in a way that if you fail, you are you're nothing and you're never gonna amount to anything and you're never gonna get further. You know, my best example would be Chris Brown, right? You know, back when I was younger, he was such a great performer. He, he really like had potential to be quite amazing, but he just constantly pops out albums with 40 tracks on them and they're kind of fine, they're whatever, right? But people give him so much praise because some of them are nice. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like I've heard some and I'm like, okay, shut up. 
but majority i'm like you create you're pumping out 40 tracks dude like that's physically it's definitely there's no way but people will still put him next to beyonce <laughs> as one of the best performers how sway how look at again the beyonce ed sheeran performance do you see how beyonce has to dress and ed sheeran's fine he's just there because he doesn't have to work harder to look like anything he just, it's not that he's mediocre, but he can dress mediocre and Beyonce has to be in a fucking ball gown that goes across the entire stage because if she wore what he was wearing, she'd get so much slack. She really would. Beyonce gets called mediocre and she's the least mediocre person I know. People like Megan Thee Stallion get called mediocre because of the, and Cardi B get called mediocre because of the type of content that they pop out, but people like Young Thug and uh, Soldier Boy get called freaking geniuses when their stuff is not as good <laughs> the migos have popped off but let's not lie their albums don't make sense <laughs> future question mark don't understand he's a i don't i don't get it i really i, I tried to listen to future album and this is with drake i can't i can't listen to him i'm sorry but it just shows that look how rich he is He's so mediocre and he doesn't get as much slack as fucking Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion for example, right? Because you're not allowed to be mediocre when you're a woman. Yes, the two ladies still have lots of money. But do you know how much of an impact that neg that negativity could have on them? Do you understand? Like, they see this publicly every day where someone's telling you that, that they're basic, you know? And we even do it to ourselves where we're like, no, but you should do better because as a woman, a black woman who's in rap, why? Why can't she just be okay? <laughs> Look at Danielle Steele, right? Her books are very basic but she can pop out literally 120 books and it's fine and people are okay with it and she's going to be rich even though they're not even that great when you have other people like tony morrison who don't get as maybe as much money as she would for example right but tony morrison has to create freaking deep thoughtful you know stories well if she doesn't well she died now but if she didn't ah it's over that's why they have so few books because they're not allowed to be mediocre one of the story is that, you know, just relax. You know what, let creatives just create. And some of our stuff won't be amazing. And some of our stuff will be amazing. And some of us are slow processing people where we pop out stuff every other day and that should be allowed. But also, you know what, if I want to show you my mediocre project, I shouldn't get slack because of it. It should be like, you know what, you did something and it's kind of cool and we're fine with it. But yeah, guys, anyway, thank you for letting me rant and rave. And let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with me. I definitely want to have this conversation. And other examples or moments where people have been, what's this, haven't allowed you to be mediocre, where you've been like, but I mean, <laughs> I, this, is the, this is my best, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Anyway, guys, stay beautiful and stop. Stop ranting on black women to be amazing all the time. We're really great. Look, look, look at us. <laughs> look at us. You know, like just, just relax.